Hello and welcome to Bromaz Disc Golf's first annual Tombstone Open. We've got Thunder Chicken's commentary coming at you. Let's get into the action. How are you guys feeling? Pretty fun. Until a certain point, then I'll get worried. Yeah, That's I'm already worried. a little worried. Yeah, you should be worried very quickly. <laughs> All right, let's see who we got up. I'm trying to show off with the spinning of the disc. Why so serious? Oh, never mind. Yeah. We got Scott Brushaver trying to show off with his spinny disc. Looks like he's pretty meh. <laughs> oh, where'd it go? And who is this guy? He, his shirt's pretty cool. Eh, not really. Well, my shirt matches my disc. That's true. That's true. Alright, on to first hole. Hole 15, par 4, 510 feet. Yeah, we had to start on hole 15 because there were other people out here. And we didn't feel like waiting to start, so we started on hole 15. So Ben, what disc are you throwing here? That is a Z Undertaker. Just trying to put it in the middle of the fairway. That was a pretty good throw. So here I've got a champion Daedalus. I'm trying to just throw it flat because I know it'll Turn over a lot with a little bit of fade at the end, ending up pretty straight. Was that the result you were looking for? Oh yeah, I was barely left side. And here's Drew's drive. And yeah. And oh, okay. A little bit of a different disappointing start there. <laughs> I I'm not gonna lie, I had some uh first camera jitters, you know. First camera jitters. Yeah. You mean first hole jitters? Same it's thing. just jitters. But then I was a little more happy with that. Pretty um, good scramble from there. Yeah. Here we are at Scott's Drive. You're probably about 200 out. Yeah, and this is the shot that really cost me the par. Yeah. Because I cut it off way too early, and it didn't get to the basket, and I had to double putt. Here, here I am just kind of pitching up with his own, just trying to drop it right by the basket. Pretty good result. And I was still trying to uh, figure out um, what kind of angle to do there. Here's Scott with a long look for par. Left it way too high in a hyzered out. Or was that for birdie? That was That was for, for birdie. Par. That was for par. No, all right. Yeah, that was for birdie. Yeah, this is this was my par putt, but I just left Ooh. it a little low. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Almost <laughs> serves another one. <laughs> yeah, That's that disappointing. Left side chains, making it a three putt. This is to clean up for uh, your birdie. And just, yeah. That was disappointing. So we're all tapping out. All of us were one or two strokes more than we either expected or planned. Yeah. All right, so after the first hole, myself at even, Scott at one over, and Drew also at one over. Moving on to hole 16, it's a par three, 275 feet, um, pretty easy hole for a lefty or righty sidearm, but let's see. A little bit hard to see in this light. And what disc did you go with here, Scott? Uh, I've got a 
glow rock that I was trying to turn over and get a nice flex out of, but it had a little too much turn and went into the woods. It did still get the full flight, so I was still up there, just a little in the woods. So that was me just going with the uh, Lucid Justice. I've really come to love that disc um, for upshots and for overstable mid drives. Um, looks like you're stuck in the cabbage back there. But yep, what? and like I said, I got up there because it did get the full flight, but oh, still in the slow What a pipe. Got that bromo going on. <laughs> no problem. This is probably Circle's Edge and just again left it low. Man, two bands in a row has to hurt. Especially the some of these just sound so annoying when you hit them. And that was kind of what I was going for is after three putting the last hole, I, this one better go well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Definitely. I've got Bentley still at even, and now I've made up my stroke, got back down to even, and Drew Pard still at plus one. So now we're on to hole 17, par three, a little bit shorter, two, uh, 233. Um, a little bit of a tight gap though. Looked like you just kind of yeah. pulled that a bit. Just slammed into one of those first trees. Usually don't throw down to a putter. I usually do a slower mid-range. So was not the disc I usually go with. Same shot, just was not on. And then here's Bentley throwing an overhand drive, which he knows I have no respect for. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes it's just the shot. Oh, it's useful. I agree. And if I had less respect for myself, I would do it. My, I would do it too. Because <laughs> I would probably get a better score. <laughs> but I, I would lose so much respect for myself. So I split the gap, but I just didn't get uh, throw it as straight as I'd like to, and just kind of hyzered out. So here I am. Still back behind that first line, going for something aggressive. Now I was actually pretty impressed with this up. I didn't, I didn't expect oh, yeah, it to went see that shot exactly the way I wanted it to. And I've gotten better at pulling off those really high, going over all the obstacles shots. And those are so helpful to have. And family just unfortunately coming up a little short. Yeah, it was really thick in there. I didn't really have much else to do and then easily the best drive just laying up for par getting a little run Total air ball on that one. Still close to the basket, just got that ceiling along with just knowing Ooh, you're in the bushes. That, that, that was just, I wasn't trying. I, I kind of lost focus there. That one looked like it hurt. It's all just tapping in. Me and Scott grabbing our pars and Bentley unfortunately walking away with the bogey, but double, double bogey. So here we have myself at two over, Scott at one over, and Drew is also at one over. So I picked up a few strokes there. Yeah, so I gained back that one stroke that I didn't want to have. Bentley going quickly to the back of the lineup. And here I was trying to get something down there to the left, and I just pulled that way right. Oh, yeah, it was big turnover going first off a little too far and way too straight. Is this that data list again here? That was the data list, and as soon as I threw it, I knew I should have thrown a different disc. 
because this was the second hole I threw a disc that I don't normally throw. Thinking I could get more distance with that little bit of turnover, mm -hmm. but I should have thrown the more overstable katana that I have in my bag, knowing I would get left, right, and dead center fairway. Wait, but just to clarify, I'm still not bad. Playing that, that only I'm just right on the edge of the bushes, dead center easy. fairway. Okay. Yeah, here we were just discussing there's been okay, just some controversy sure. over the mandatory, but we were just playing it. That tree that says the one way signed on it is the only mandatory. So, Ben, you're trying for this big flex shot here? Yeah, I mean, I was really trying to just kind of play it safe and put it in a good spot to get par, but I ended up pulling it a little bit left and going a little bit more aggressive than I wanted to, but it actually turned out really well. Yeah, and the interesting thing was I actually kind of had sort of a gap, but I didn't really know what to go for. Um, so yeah, I tried. you definitely lucked out getting that and back of the fairway gap. Bonk. And, and just that's, didn't, just, that's just unfortunate. Yeah, it just didn't make use of it. Miss Scott's up, but I'm sure it was pretty decent. We'll see that in a minute. And then I just pull it again. Yep, and for my upshot, I just went with the overstable flick on the far left side. Just let it skip in. And here's Bentley taking the basically the same line I did, but with his backhand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a little bit more inside and tight. So now I'm just, I just really want to get something there close just to have a putt because at this point I'm conceding that I'm going to get a, double, a bogey or worse, so. And here I am, just an easy layup to the basket. Just going to try and heiser it in. And that shot was tracking perfectly and just nicked the edge of the branches, slowed it down so much that... Yeah, that's just unfortunate. Oh, oh okay. That one. That was really that was a good. nice putt. Yeah. yeah. Kind of unfortunate that was that it was for bogey, but yeah, I'm not too disappointed because I was really worried about getting like a double on this one, so I was pretty happy with that. Oh yeah, nice hyzer. Never really thought about coming out. Great yeah. putt. And here, you, you went OB, so you had to come back in. No, I wasn't actually OB. Oh, but I was okay. close enough that I could take a meter in. So. Got you. And just another band. That, that's unfortunate. Three band hits in four holes. It's not the way you want to start. Good bid there, just a little low. And then we're all of us just Ben and Scott cleaning up. Yeah, and it was that one shot that did it in for me when it nicked off the tree. And so Bentley now at two over, and Scott also at two over, and then myself also at two over. So we're all tied up at this point. Tie ball game. Yeah. Or disc. <laughs> <laughs> this is hole one, par three, 325 feet. Um, yeah. So f for me, it's usually a sidearm um, straight at the basket with uh, one of my distance drivers. Um, and here we were just kind of forgetting how we were scoring. <laughs> yeah, and I, w I was blown away that Drew got the same score as me after going way in the back off his drive, hitting two trees in a row, but that long putt and then my messed up approach put us at the same score. It looks like that one just kind of turned on you more than you expected. Or? Yeah, I mean, I got lucky to miss that tree. It that that was an onyx it it used to be pretty overstable but it's starting to get beat in to where 
if there's a pretty stiff headwind, it might turn over a little bit. And here I was just going with the Raider, um, <laughs> telling us to get right. <laughs> um, it didn't skip like I wanted to, but I still got like maybe about a 20 footer. Yeah, one thing to note, you probably can tell just by looking at the things around, but there was a lot of wind that day. Yeah, and I was trying to get a bigger turnover there, and I just didn't get it. But I ended up straight, and I'm never upset when I just get through the trees, end up in the open. And you give it a little just, bid there, right off the yeah. basket. And that's exactly why, is it's just wide open for a layup to par, maybe even a throw in for birdie. Here's my putt for birdie, probably about 30 feet. Another band. You just couldn't get away from them, could you? Nah, I was, I was just, I was, <laughs> I was really close on a lot of putts, but just not close enough. And this one I really wanted to get to pull my score back down. But once again, I, I just was leaving them all low. Yeah, it looked like he flipped up the back end of the putter there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just had to do a nosedive. Everybody parred, so myself at two over, Scott also at two over, and Drew also at two over. Still tied up. What's up? So this is Drew Plyler, uh, sponsored by Dynamic Discs, and uh, today I wanted to show you my favorite disc, the Raider. Uh, this is in the Fusion Plastic. This is uh, 171 grams. Um, I love this disc a lot. I got to throw one in Colorado Springs. And that was the first time I got to throw in. Uh, from the moment, first throw, I loved it. Um, it feels great for sidearms, feels great for backhands. Um, and I can, I can push 350 or over with it. Um, I'm not the best thrower in the world, but yeah, that's what I got. And this thing is amazing, so get, go get you one. That whole time, I was waiting for you to say Raiders go far. <laughs> and you didn't. You let me down. I'm, I know. I'm You're really a horrible salesman. I know. I'm so upset. I, I feel like I need a national apology to Dynamic Discs. <laughs> and you can hear on this hole especially, the wind was ripping. Oh, yeah. And that was just overturned. Unfortunately, missed the Mando, and I will have to re-tee. Yeah, because that one, it like hit the road and then came back in into the fairway so yeah it, it was it was in bounds but it missed the mando so it was still technically out and that one i felt really good about but then just caught that tree on the right Yeah, and I'm throwing that Daedalus again, trying to get that little bit of turnover to go farther than I can usually get with my more overstable katana. It did flip over a little bit more than I was expecting, but it went about as far as I can get it and gotten that back gap where there is a perfect line through the trees as long as you get far enough. Yeah, and that did look like a pretty good shot. Yeah, a little confusion there, but unfortunately, since I missed the Mando, I do have to re-tee. Oh yeah, and our phone started dying, so we had to figure out that out on the course. But, uh, been here with the second drive. And this one turned out actually really well. Yeah, you got that late turnover. And then just caught another tree there. I was really hoping to get out in that open spot so I had a nice look. 
but yep and here's Drew going for his third shot I'm going here with an Opto X Explorer trying to just pull something get something straight up towards the basket And that was a great shot. Not, from, from back there, I'm not sure how much better I could have done, so I was pretty happy with that. Here's Scott. What I was shot. actually trying to do here is get on the left side of those bushes on the right, but I went a little bit right but the wind actually helped me out, shoved it above those bushes. And it looked great oh, yeah. out of pure luck and then nicked one of those trees and just fell flat. Kind of an unfortunate kick. And that was a pretty good shot from there. <laughs> yep, and I was definitely going for that hyzer, just didn't take the wind into account and just sent it way too far left. And yeah, that's I'm, unfortunate. I'm just not even yep. going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, here I am, farther left than I meant to be. But still within circle and not a too hard putt. Yeah, probably about 20 feet. So. Good push. And that, yeah. yeah, that's just disappointing. That, a double bogey on that hole hurts. Yeah. It does. So, Bailey now here at plus four. Um, Scott at plus two. And this will also put me at plus four as well. Um, really hoping to pick up some more strokes on this next couple of holes. Um, so, hole three, par three, 340 feet. Um, pretty this, easy hole. Just got to hit your line. Yeah, just make sure that you stay straight and maybe a little right. Because if you get left, that brush is thick. And I think actually it's OB. Yeah, and here I had exactly the direction and angle I wanted. But with the wind, it was drifting a little bit too far left, and I wasn't sure if it was OB. That was your uh, champion katana, right? That would be the katana. After two throws that I tried to throw the Daedalus and it just turned too much, I went with Old Faithful. And that one just looked really good. Yeah, it was a little short, but it was still a good result. And here I'm going with the Fusion Getaway, probably one of my, my straightest fairway. Got some good distance on it. It was a little short. Um, but still had a bid about right outside the circle. Good bid, just a little short. I bet you're really wanting to pick this one up right here. Yeah, after all the bogeys and doubles. I that that felt good. I, I was really wanting to get a birdie to take off some of those strokes. And here it is. All three of us getting one of those slow-mos. Yep, and here I was right on the edge of the OB. And just short. Getting the high... Getting the par I expected, but 
barely missing the birdie, I was one. Sometimes getting that height covered in all that brush is sometimes hard. All right, so after that hole, I'm now at plus three. Scott is still at plus two. And Drew is still at plus four. Moving on to hole four, par four, 540 feet. Sounds familiar, huh? Well, Bentley's gonna, it's like you're going with a big hyzer play, it looks. Yeah, I know, um, most people play to the right, but for me, it's a little bit hard to get it to stop in a good place. So I like to throw a hyzer out to the left because it's a little bit easier to put it in position. <laughs> it looks like that one just got a little too too high for you. Yeah, that one just shot straight up in the air. That was a good shot. I was pretty happy with that result. So here I'm having to lean out really far because if I do my backhand right next to the tree, I know I'm going to hit my hand on the tree, and I've done that twice too many times to be interested <laughs> in doing it again. It doesn't feel too good. Yeah, and out of the hand, this felt good, but it just needed a little bit more power to get in that hole. Yeah, you said you've been working on your sidearm some, right? Yeah, they they haven't been the greatest lately, but they're getting better. That was a good up. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that approach. The best um, two shots I've probably made on this hole before. Just caught that one tree. Yep, and it was just what I wanted, just a little bit too left. Not a bad up from being pinched like you were. Yeah, and I was kind of in an awkward position here. I had a tree right in front of me, so I kind of had to stand backwards to get around it. Looks like you not didn't ended up in a good, pretty good spot, and just couldn't connect. I had way too many putts that day that were just really close, but not close enough. And that one, I was really disappointed. I really wanted to get that, pull my score down on this hole. Especially after those two shots, but. Oh, that's just cleaning up our little putts there. All right, Drew picking up one on the card. Myself at four over, Scott at three over. Drew also at four over. Here we are at hole five, the longest hole on the course, par five, 910 feet. Um, yeah, this it, one is a beast. Yeah, it takes a lot to be able to get a good score on this hole. Yeah, this hole really isn't that hard as long as you go for control. And if you just really know the hole, but when you start getting a little too aggressive or just going out of your way, then you start getting off the fairway and that's where your score racks up quick.
Yeah. Because not only is it long, but also there is a lot of OB on the hole. A lot of OB. So what were you trying to do here, Ben? Um, well, the wind was kind of helping me out, so I was trying to actually get across the creek. Which is a good ways down there. Yeah, it's it's, it's a good ways down there. It, it takes a it's not that long for me to get there. I just make sure I have to make sure to get it right. And it looks like you just kind of had the nose up a little too much and just kind of skied it out. Yeah, it didn't quite get enough power on it. It was thankfully not OB though. So then you're just kind of pitching out. Yeah. Yep, and now all three of us are pretty much in the same spot, and right here is prime position to attack the rest of the hole. And I'm just sending one straight down the center, which I know will have some nice gliding fade at the end. Yeah, that was a good shot. Good second shot. And I totally didn't expect to be here. Oh, oh this is Billy's job. Sorry. <laughs> um, are you going with your Rock 3 here? Is that what you're throwing? No, I was actually throwing my uh, zombie, trying to turn it over and maybe even get a little bit onto the left part of the fairway. So you're telling me you have Innova and Discraft in your bag? Multiple brands? <laughs> What? I have two <laughs> Innova discs that I sometimes use if I think I might lose a disc. I don't care about those as much. Mm -hmm. And this one I was just really upset about because I just left it a little short and went ended up going OB. And I, I didn't really know how the best way to attack the, the um, basket from here, so I tried a little like. And Heiser sidearm, but it ended up just Heisering out and hitting a tree. So, yeah. Yep, and here I am after my second shot. I've got a pretty straight shot up to the basket. Only problem is still that left side OB. And there it goes. So and basically, I just mash it, try and drill it into the hillside behind it. And you got a pretty nice kick off that tree. It didn't really it kick. It didn't really kick. There was some brush that I punched through. And it did slow it down a lot, which I think helped a lot because it just kind of settled it onto the hill. Right up there. Yeah. With a long but not difficult putt. Mm -hmm. And cash. And cashing in for the birdie. That's a good birdie to get. That, yeah, yeah really that good. hole, it's I used to hate it. That was the one that I always... Got five over par in one hole, but <laughs> up and all of a sudden, just recently, I just kind of figured it out. It hasn't bothered me since. Yeah. So myself at five over, Scott now at two over with the birdie, and Drew tied with me at five over. And that hole definitely brought me back some strokes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this hole's kind of fun. Cause it's a little island hole action. Yeah, hole six, 250 feet, par three. If you hit a car, it's an instant hole one. Yeah, uh, not until this one? point. Don't Ace. you mean hole, <laughs> hole in one? Yeah, and up until this point, I've been playing a pretty normal game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clipped these branches, set it down. Sent pollen going everywhere. I haven't had too much that's been outstanding, and I haven't been playing a fantastic game, but I haven't been horrible. A couple bad holes, but also a couple pretty good holes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've been pretty balanced so far. Yeah, me and Drew were both having pretty rough days. Yeah, Drew seemed to start out rough and then pick back up momentum. Yeah, especially with this shot right here, I just went with a big hyzer, skipped it off the road. And, and landed that, it that was a great shot. Yeah, I was really happy with that. And here I am going with a very similar shot, but just trying to keep it a little bit lower and get a little bit more forward skip off the road. 
Yeah, and that road really is helpful if you can just aim for it because yeah. it's a lot easier to let it skip and then settle down than to let it hit the island and then hope it settles down and doesn't roll off. And, and this looked really good out of my hand, but it just barely didn't have enough momentum on it to get up on the island. Yeah, and that was really disappointing because it, it was very close to being a great shot. And that's just kind of the problem with a disc that overstable is you got so much flare that it wasn't linear enough to put it on the island. Yeah, yeah. And here I've got a real simple textbook layup. Just barely oh, sure. put it two nose up. That, and that's, it skids on the road, hits that, the curb. That's just unfortunate. Those kind of shots just humble you and remind you I'm not that great, actually. <laughs> But almost throwing it in from the drop zone, so not giving up. And that's pretty routine, what you do when you get to that drop zone. You can try to run it, but best idea is to just give it a little bit of a run, but make sure that you're going to put it right by the basket to tap it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And great birdie there. Yeah, that felt really good. Uh, I've learned how to play that hole, and um, yeah. Yeah, it's and that's become exactly one of how my, I feel on the last hole is I've just learned how to play it. Yeah, and it's become one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, so Bentley here, it's six over now, and uh, Scott now, unfortunately grabbing that double bogey, puts him at four over, and now I'm also at four over. Actually, some of these scores I'm seeing for the first time because I wasn't really paying attention that much. Moving on to hole seven, <laughs> par three, 305. Pretty simple hole. There's a tree line about halfway down the fairway. Which I hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Drew kind of showing you that that can kind of get in the way sometimes. Yeah, and this one I'm throwing an understable Maverick, hoping to just drill it flat through the gap let it turn over to the right. Fortunately, it didn't get quite enough turn and ended up fading out, so it went very straight. Yeah. But I'm still in the perfect spot for an easy hyzer up to par. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This hole is pretty easy. There's not a whole lot to it as long as you get past those grove of trees. And even if you don't get past it, as long as you're not too covered up by trees, which it's an ben, easy pitch up to par. Which Bentley is, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm left here with nothing to do except throw a forehand roller to kind of cut it around. And this one actually ended up being really good. Yeah, that turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to. And then here, just doing an easy little layup there. Nothing to it. Here's Scott with a probably about a 40 footer for birdie. And ooh, just a little short. Tried to smash it a little bit. You don't realize how funny it's going to be if it wasn't recording voice. <laughs> That would be really funny, but I think it and is. And those baskets just do not like you today. No, they don't. You can't get away from Oh, and that was just also rude. And <laughs> getting a little bit of his anger out by that throwing a disc. That was exactly my mood at that moment. I just lost. Yeah, had to, had to disrespect the basket. We, yeah, we had, to, we had to discipline the basket for what it did wrong. Mm -hmm. After that, I'm going to be at seven over. Scott still at four over, and Drew is now at five over. Yeah, I dropped back a bit. I did, didn't like it, but you know. All right, moving on to hole eight, par five, 710 feet. You're, you're going with that Daedalus again here? Again, the Daedalus, hoping for a little flip. And that was a very early release and didn't get hardly any power so it just went totally straight hyzered in behind those 
that patch of trees on the left. I'm on the back side of it. So in the open, but with a wall of trees and bushes right in front of me. Yeah, and for the orange layout, there's a basket back there. And um, getting stuck in those trees can sometimes be one of the worst spots to lay down. So you really want to stay out of it if you can. And this one, that undertaker has been kind of turning over on me lately. So I was trying to compensate for it and put it on a little bit more hyzer, but I kind of overcompensated and it just finished out to the right too far. Yeah, and here I was um, thinking amongst myself which disc I wanted to throw. And what you got there? That there was a uh, Biofusion Raider, uh, not Raider, uh, Defender, and I was thinking about throwing that, but then I changed my mind last minute to a Ballista Pro, and I just didn't release it where I wanted to, but didn't ever see that line before to the orange basket, so probably I'll try that in the future. <laughs> um. Here's Scott, and kind of a tricky situation. Yeah, and those trees on the right are the di directly in the direction I actually want to go. So I'm kind of going for this back door route with the hyzer. And actually hit that little stump, which kind of saved you from going OB. Yeah, I left it way too low and basically drilled it into the ground. And here I'm just trying to throw something, get something in the middle, and I just, I just grip locked it, and pulled it right. And that's a nice shot. Or at least, I think. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I don't really remember the, where that ended up. And this one I just got too low. I was trying to skip it off the road, but it just never got up high enough to have a chance to come back in. And that was pretty uh, disappointing, too, because it looked like it was going to skip back in bounds. And then I've been a really nice shot. Yeah, it just kind of glided across the road. Really? Here, I, w I had to get really aggressive and actually throw a roller, and it turned out okay. Yeah. So here, um, I'm trying to remember what else. I'm trying to attack the pin, um, and I just end up pulling it a little short right into that last bush and those bushes are one of the worst places to get stuck in on this hole just yeah, barely here caught I'm on the right side just barely on the edge behind those trees but this looks like a bit of a tricky situation Just a little long, but... Yep, and those weeds at the back. Here's Scott with a long look for par, I believe. Yeah, and just probably a little to the left, unfortunately. And another band. Wow. They just yeah, don't that, stop. That was just <laughs> rough. And that one I just... Yeah. <laughs> at this point we didn't get to do the whole 18 because because all of our phones died yeah so <laughs> so this is actually the that's wow. just disappointing unfortunately this is actually the last hole and we did not get all 18 in so that will do it for the first annual tombstone open yeah final scores are me at nine over Ugh. scott at six over Drew, also at okay. 6 Okay, see, I didn't realize A little bit of a that. disappointing tie there. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to break that at some point, I guess. So, this has been Bromez Disc Golf's first annual Tombstone Open. Thank you guys for watching.